Hi there, this is Shivani with Go Engineer. Uh, this is going to be a webinar for an introduction to SOLIDWORKS Plastics, which is injection molding, and a look at the standard version of the software. We're going to be taking a look at this part file here, and in the next 30 minutes of this webinar, we're going to run an injection molding plastic study on this single part. We'll take a look at the most common results that we would want, and then we will see what further options are available in the higher level packages. All right, this is the part we're working with. This is a plastic housing for a small motor and a gear assembly used in a robot arm. Plastics cannot have multiple studies per configuration. So I have to make a new configuration so that we can see a setup from scratch. We have two kinds of mesh that we have to start with here. Uh, solid is going to be the slightly more time-consuming one, but let's take a look at that. We hit next, and now we're on the screen where we choose what this CAD geometry is actually representing. So in the standard package, you would only have the option for cavity, which is the part we're trying to fill with plastics. The runner through the mold are from the higher level packages, and we would have to be using multi-bodies to be able to grab those. Uh, so. This part already here is already a cavity, so I'm good with that. We'll hit next. Now this is the main screen where we are deciding how our mesh is going to look, but this is just going to mesh the outside faces of the part. Uh, what we have here are options for the overall size. We can kind of get an estimate of how many elements we're going to see. Then the gradation between the smaller elements and the larger elements, and we can mesh that. If we look closely at some of these curves or small holes, uh, we can see that the resolution with this larger mesh isn't very good. Perhaps this is okay for speed, but not for anything else. You did a sign face, you click the face and then just change the size here. Once we've assigned that mesh control, we go back and remesh the entire part and we can see how that face is now better resolution. So we would go and do that for all the other faces. We would come to this summary page and make sure we don't have anything too large, like large aspect ratios above 20 or any other really bad elements, and make sure our model is watertight. So we passed all of those. We move on to this page where we can modify individual elements or fill in holes if needed. Not necessary here. So then we can move next into the solid mesh. Uh, choosing what types of mesh we want to have internally. That could be tetrahedral or hexahedral. The hexahedral mesh creates square blocky elements, so you could fail in capturing uh, highly curved faces or detailed features. So more commonly, we are using the tetrahedral type. So once we've made that decision, we'll now create the internal mesh for the inside of the part file. If I like that, if it looks okay, I can hit next and then inspect it in a couple other places using section views, things like that. I'm going to go ahead and skip that and we're going to hit okay. So as we let this load in, we're going to see a lot of new inputs show up for my project. And so now we'll start going through the necessary ones to be able to run the plastic study. Starting with the polymer type, we have about 4,000 different materials in the SOLIDWORKS Plastics database. These are all plastics. We're not talking about metals here. And it is possible to create your own custom materials, but it does require a lot of material information, so just make sure you have that handy. We're going to go ahead and choose a generic ABS plastic for this part. When I finish with that, you'll see a green check mark over polymers. And then I can move into fill settings. I don't actually have to do this to run the study, but I do recommend it. Just go see what those temperatures are and what your maximum injection pressure is, and make sure all of that aligns to your actual mold and your machine. Now we have a couple other options here at the bottom of this property manager. Again, those are only available in the professional or premium packages of plastics, but let's go ahead and talk about them briefly. So in a fiber analysis, we have fiber-filled materials, for example, glass-reinforced nylon. This analysis will predict the resulting fiber orientation, and so we can find out the stability of the model with or without the fibers. 
The fiber percentage of each material is included in the polymer material database, and material data such as viscosity coefficients reflect the properties of particular fiber percentages and polymer combinations. The next type is this co-injection type. In a co-injection simulation, two polymers, or polymer and a gas, are injected sequentially into the cavity. Typically, the first material becomes skin and the second material becomes core. Co-injection is also used for gas assist injection molding, where a gas is selected for the second material and the part becomes hollow. And the last thing we need to do is set up some injection locations for this part file. So if I go to the injection location within our boundary conditions, I can start selecting where the plastic is injected into this part file. In this case, this motor housing is a part of a larger family mold, and it does have multiple injection locations because of that. Generally, the way you do this is you select on faces. When I do that, it's going to seem like it's creating a cylindrical type of input. But if we look at the mesh, this is actually getting inserted directly on the node. But when we get a look at the mesh, we can see this is actually just snapping to a node of those elements. And when I add the location, this is actually filling just through one of the elements itself. If this assumed wrong, I could go in and add a couple more faces. So generally, what people will do is create a split face and mesh that split face with a fine mesh. That way you get um, a proper injection location. There's no limit on how many gates we can define, but typically we're limited by cost or weld line formation. Multiple gates may be required to fill very large parts, but they can also be used to balance the pressure within a mold cavity to prevent core shift and unbalanced filling. Now this part model itself, a couple other injection places, and after inserting those, we, we can predict the flow pattern. If those injection locations aren't ideal, then we can go into our automatically add locations button. What this will do is try and symmetrically arrange a couple of these injection locations on the thicker regions of the model. This could be good in that we get a pretty equal flow front or filling times. The plastics isn't thinking about the runner design or anything like that. So take those inputs with a grain of salt. And at that point, we, we could run the flow study. This simple solid mesh and plastic study does take my computer more than 30 minutes to run. So we are going to switch back to the pre-ran study and take a look at our results through that. The fundamental plot most of us want to look at is filling, which displays the profile of the melted plastic as it flows through the mold cavity and then tells us how long it takes to fill. That's the legend on the left-hand side that tells us that. So at a glance, I can see that with these injection settings, this material, these gate locations, my part is going to fill without too much issue. I'm not seeing any short shots on the model. Short shots occur when a mold cavity will not completely fill with melted plastic, as seen here. In this example, the gate is located at the base, filling the cup in both directions. The bottom fills easily enough, but the top flow front slows and eventually freezes. This could be happening for various reasons, and we may need higher injection pressures, faster injection speeds, or higher melt temperatures to fix it. There's a lot of factors, and if you've been in the industry a long time, you know there is definitely an art to injection molding. It may be looking at this cup with many more ideas on how to get this to fill. What we're trying to do is make those ideas slightly more accessible to the average designer. So problems can be fixed via software and some comparatively quick cycles of troubleshooting before the molds are ever manufactured and tested. In this particular case with this cup, an increase in the part wall thickness was required to solve the problem. Now within this filling plot type, we have a couple checkboxes. Uh, the first is these weld lines. With weld lines, we have places where the flow front separates and comes back together. They are caused by through holes in the part and then joined together on the opposite side. They can also be caused by varying wall thickness that results in multiple flow fronts or more than one gate location. 
Weld lines are never as strong as areas of a part that do not have weld lines, so they can result in structural defects. And poor weld line appearance can result in cosmetic defaults in a molded part. So a quick glance at where these might be on this final version of the part can be helpful. Uh, similarly, we have this air traps checkbox as well in the filling type. So as an injection mold fills with melted plastic, the air in the cavities is displaced by the plastic and we get this dieseling effect. Similar to an engine where air gets compressed to the point it combusts, in injection molding this can cause part defects or unintended through holes or burn marks. These graphical spheres are representing where those air traps might be. If these are not in convenient locations, we need to redesign so that the air traps are moved to more ventable locations. So taking a look at a couple other options we have available to us, uh, one of the popular ones is the volumetric shrinkage. At the end of the day, what we really want is warp, but warp is a result of non-uniform shrinkage. We know shrinkage is inevitable, but if we can see what it is going to look like beforehand, we can make some intelligent decisions about our part or mold design. Now for sink marks, also very important. These occur in relatively thick wall sections that are not packed out well enough to compensate for the shrinkage that occurs as the molded part cools down. So this thick section is completely solid and so cools a lot slower than the rest of the part resulting in this depression. If we ran the pack phase, we could determine how long it would take to cool the part and track specific nodes for temperatures or pressures. Mm -hmm.